o'clock. Um, I'd like to open up the meeting. And I have uh, one adjustment that I'd like to make to the agenda. Um, Skip is here. He would like to um, nominate someone, uh, a fellow named Michael Sadler, to be on the Planning Commission. So I, I thought maybe we could do that after Maverick's uh, presentation. Skip Perfect. For that too. Uh, any other adjustments to the agenda? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Any public comment at all? Don't hear any. Okay. So do I hear a motion to approve the bills to the town? Yes. So moved. I'll do second then. Brian, I'll second it. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the January 25th, uh, 2021 select board meeting? I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay um, so Maverick, um, you are a co-host and we're ready to, to see what you have to show us. Thank you. And do you know one here, I guess most everybody has a name. Um, on, at least on my screen, um, the top row is Brian Shatney, he's a select board member, myself, Michael Gray, and then Paul Cerruti. Hello. He's also a select board member. To your right on my screen is Skip Lindsay. He's the chair of the Planning Commission. And to your left is Chuck Batchelder. He's our road commissioner. And on the bottom left is Diana Paduzzi. She is the town clerk. And then this J-U-Z-Z-C, that's a Robin Durkee. She's just kind of listening in. And I have a feeling the other Maverick Murphy might be your dad. I'm not sure. Yep. Okay, good. So you have the screen. Okay. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, my name is Maverick Murphy. Uh, I'm a resident of Woodbury, a graduate of Woodbury Elementary, and I'm currently a sophomore at Hazen Union. Uh, I'm interested in learning more about Woodbury's history, and I'd also like to do some community service for the town uh, by creating an interactive map. So currently on the Woodbury Town website, there is a map that has some town buildings, lakes and ponds, and other points of interest. Um, but the new map would expand, organize, and add more information to that map. Uh, and that would be also included on the town website. Um, it would be helpful to residents and tourists or visitors, uh, and also town officials or educators. Uh, so right now I have six basic categories uh, that could be included in the map. Uh, we can add on to this in the future or take some away if you think they're unnecessary. Uh, so the first one is historic homes. Second one is historic districts. The third one is lakes and ponds for fishing, swimming, or boating. Um, the fourth one is vast trails um, for snowboarding, or sorry, snowmobiling or skiing. Uh, fifth is hiking trails. And then lastly, sixth is businesses. So I've created a sample map to kind of show you what it would be like. Uh, I've only added a few different sites in each of the categories, but I can share my screen to just show you what it looks like right now. Um, so this is the overview of Woodbury. I don't have any of these categories on the left selected. Um, to view the different layers, there are these check boxes. Um, so those can be selected to see the separate levels or layers, I mean. Um, I created this map using Google Maps, um, which I have access to through my OSSU account. But I believe the town would also be granted access um, because they're an organization. So if we want to just view the first category here, historic sites and structures. We can just select this box right here and you see all these houses pop up on the map. Um, I've color coordinated these also each of the categories. So historic sites and structures, I've chosen that to be black. So you can see all the icons are black. And then um, the separate icon shapes represent different things. For example, this is a sort of historic house. And then this right here could represent a barn or a complex of houses and different structures. Um, 
I have based these historic sites and structures off of the surveys done by the State of Vermont Division for Historic Preservation um, from the 1980s uh, that are also included as files on the Woodbury website. But I've Maverick, your, your mic is muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so I've used the surveys off the town website and transferred the information onto these historic houses right here. So just as an, as an example, we can look at the prior farm right here. Um, when one of these areas or houses is selected, it highlights it on the map so you can see where it is. And for each house, I've included the address of the house, the date it was built, and also the um, architectural style. And then down here in the photos, uh, if you click on these, you're able to see photos of the house taken when the surveys were done, so in the early 80s. And then also I've included the images of the surveys. Um, and I've done that for each of the house houses. Um, and also the historic districts, which we can look at next. Uh, so historic districts, the second level or second layer. And I've used the line feature to do these. So if we click on this, we can see that the historic district is outlined by this white line. And again, I've used information from the uh, historians surveys to uh, get the information for these houses. And um, Something different about this one is I just included the historical significance, which I also got off of the surveys um, on the town website. So if you just wanna learn about this one, it's um, a community created from immigrants to work on the Woodbury Quarry. I thought that was pretty interesting. And then again, we have the photos, the date it was built, and I've also included the original owner for this one. Um, back to the map. The next category is lakes and ponds. So we can zoom out again to see where this is in Woodbury. And uh, Nelson Pond, that's another, or that's one pond near my house. So I just chose that one for an example. If we click on it, it will highlight it on the map. And then this pop-up menu on the left side of the page comes up with more information about this specific lake. Um, and I got this information off of the Vermont Fish and Wildlife website. And I, I think it'd be useful to people coming to boat or fish. Um, and then I also included the type of fish in the lake, which I think would be important to fishermen. Um, you can embed links in the Google Maps. So for this, I included a separate resource, which was um, a depth chart from the Vermont Gov website. So if we just click on this, we can see it brings you to um, a depth chart, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, so back to the map, uh, I think this is pretty much it for Nelson Pond. Uh, I also made these, all of the lakes and ponds would be blue, this blue color. I thought that just kind of represented ponds well. <laughs> um, next is hiking trails. For this one, I again use the line. Um, feature on Google Maps to just map out what the trail kind of looks like from an overview. Uh, and I chose Nichols Ledge just because I'd visited it and I had pictures taken of it, uh, just as an example. And in the description, I included the trail length, difficulty, and the seasons it's open. And then this picture my brother took, I included this one also, um, just so people who had never been there could see what the top was like, because that's the nicest part. <laughs> um, back to the map. Um, next one is Vermont Association of Snow Travelers or Vast Trails. I have very little information about the Vast Trails so far, but uh, I just included a section by my house that I just knew. Um, I believe that the Mountain Tamers are the organization that uh, maintains the trails in Woodbury. And that's true. Yeah, if this idea is approved, I would like to reach out to them to see if they have more maps of um, the complete 
trail map of all of the trails, um, the vast trails in Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this yeah. is, I'm Maverick, still- Maverick, I have, I have the name of the person to contact for the Mountain Tamers, so I'll get that to you. Okay, so. thank you. Um, lastly, businesses. Um, I just added three as an example. We can look at the sheep shop right now. Um, this icon could indicate a retail store, which is what this is. Um, yeah, the type of business I included, contact information, and also the website address. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for now. Um, I'll continue to add more points if this idea is approved. And I'll also reach out to people possibly by front porch form to see if people have more information about town or sorry, ponds and lakes or hiking trails or local businesses, just to make sure I get everything in the map and I have all of the information. Um, and I'd be happy to teach any authorized user or town official how to use this or how to edit it in the future. It's a pretty simple um, website to use. Um, yeah, and I'd be happy to hear any feedback or questions or ideas you guys have. Yeah. I have, I have one comment, comment Maverick, um, mm -hmm. and maybe some others as I think about it some more, but seeing the uh, trail up to the top of Nichols Ledge, um, yeah. I know that's basically on private land. It's not a public trail. Um, and I know there was an issue um, a number of years ago, there was some kind of bus touring group that um, publicized that trail and were bringing uh, tour groups up there. Yeah. And the, the property owner, or actually the person who manages the property for the property owner, um, asked them to take that information off um, their listing uh, because, I mean, there is a trail there and the people that own it do not mind people going up there but they, they did not want it to be publicized. Okay. Um, just for, I guess for liability issues, I'm not sure. Um, so this may become an issue with other sites that we might wanna put on there. We may, I mean, I can look into that. Maybe Diana has some thoughts about private property that gets listed. I, some of these places are private homes that um, still exist in you know, the old historical buildings and. Um, and yet they are on our website. So there may be some privacy issues, public use issues that, um, you know, we may need to get clearance for. So that's just uh, something that I'm aware of. Um, and the, the Nichols Ledge Trail kind of brought that up for me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd be happy to look into that or contact the homeowners if that's what needs to be done. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure what steps you would take. Yeah, yeah that's another possibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we could try to help you with that too. Um, yeah. So I, th you know, I think this is a great, great yeah. idea. It'll be a great asset, I think. And it's, I love the different um, layers to it where you can kind of go to other, other information, mm -hmm. you know, like the thing with Nelson Pond and seeing the depth levels. That was, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah, very good idea. This is very nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maverick, what kind of approval were you looking for? Um, just to keep working on it. I didn't want to get too far along or to yeah. include it on the town website, whatever. Do you, do you need any kind of town approval for the, for your school at all? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, I'll reach out to you if I do, but not that okay. I know of. Yeah. I mean, I certainly don't have any objections and um, I don't know how Brian and Paul no, feel about no, that. No, but no, no objections. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're, we're definitely, Skip, oh, you Skip have a question. Mm -hmm. Can't hear you, Skip. Did Skip break the internet? <laughs> Can't hear you. He did. He knows how to fix it. <laughs> yeah, we know a good computer guy. Okay. <laughs> he knows the show is being muted. No. Still not able to hear you, Skip. Can't hear. 
There should be a sign for that. Like yeah. <laughs> that was a good one, Diana. <laughs> Looks like his screen might be frozen too. He might have a connection a connectivity problem. issue. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, this is a great idea, school. Maverick. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe long overdue. Oh, thanks. Skip, can you hear us now? You can. We can't we hear can't you. Hear him. <laughs> He can always just email me if his uh, microphone okay. doesn't end up working. He does have your email address. Still can't hear you, Skip. He's probably got your wood-fired internet there, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this go. would be... Uh, Maverick, you would work on this for a while longer before it goes on the website, right? Yeah, I think the best idea maybe would to, or would be to add it in stages because I think if I really did want to continue with this, it could last for a few years. Um, yeah. But if, I don't think you guys would want to wait that long to post it. So yeah, you could um, work as a permanent fixture for you to work on. Yes. <laughs> You're going to find the, be, the rule of volunteering. Our web we'll we'll make yeah. you the Woodbury webmaster. <laughs> <laughs> we need a new one. Yeah, we do, actually. Um, <laughs> so, Maverick, I also um, let um, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission know of this project. There's a great contact person there. Um, her name is Pam DeAndrea. She, and I can give you her contact information if you'd like to to contact her, she is pretty much um, head of the or GIS, and I can never remember what that stands for, but she's a, her, her, one of her things is, is making maps. Um, and she might be a good ad advisor um, if, you, if you wanted to ask questions. And then, um, you know, the planning commission, um, this community mapping uh, forum that we'll be doing next Tuesday, um, you'll get to see a couple of folks from Fish and Wildlife who work with town planning, um, but also do a lot of work with maps. Um, so it, and it's pretty amazing um, what they're able to do. There's also another um, agency of natural resources um, map source, it's called BioFinder. It is more related to natural resources, but that's another great set of maps to, um, to play around with. I'm not sure if you're aware of those or not, but um, there's, there's probably more, like you said, there's more information that you, than you would probably ever wanna know about on some of those, but, um, but, but those are other resources. And, and I'll, I'll put together like a little kind of uh, uh, connecting or contact sheet that I'll, I'll send to you. Okay, There's Skip. You. Skip, are you? Still, I, don't know. Yeah, oh, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're underserved so much in Woodbury, you know, <laughs> with internet. But anyhow, Maverick, I have access to the 911 mapping system for the entire state. And it's a, it's a GIS based map application that's freeware in, in that, you know, everyone in the state pays for it. So I can send you that link. And within that map application are layers, including what you had mentioned, vast trails. So it'll show you the vast trails through Woodbury. Okay. And all you have to do is click on the layers and up will pop, among other things, vast trails or uh, what other churches, anything you really, I think, could utilize in your project. And I'll send you that link and perhaps you and I can you know, get together for like 15 minutes and I can show you how to you know, cruise around on the app and glean from it what you need. Yeah, you absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Another thing that people might be interested in is uh, property lines with, that we do have access to. Those are all public information on the mm -hmm. ANR website and also yeah. on our website. And can keep you busy for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that nine one one map also has parcel mapping too. Oh. So if you really want to get 
granular with your project. You can get right uh, down to the parcel. Granular, yes. Yeah, that's really <laughs> granular. Huh? Yeah. yeah, so this is, well, I'm, and I'm, I'm really delighted that you're uh, taking up this project and, and willing to, to help the town, um, you know, have a really uh, interesting map to play around with. Um, it'll be a, a great addition to the website. So, yeah, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, great. You said so, you're a sophomore? Yeah, at Hazen. Okay. So you got a couple more years. Mm -hmm. Before. Yeah, you could work oh, on this. Or... you to some other <laughs> university. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and any time that you get stuck or need some help or um, just have questions, you know, contact any any of us really, and um, we'll try to to either connect you to the person to answer it or try to answer it ourselves. Uh, anything that we can do to help. Um, you know, um, we'd be glad, at least speaking for myself, and I'm sure everyone else feels the same, sure. we'd be glad, be glad to do that. Absolutely. Good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions um, for Maverick at all? Any I'm good. Comments? I'm good. Do you have any other questions at all, Maverick, for, or comments that you'd like to share before we move on to the next agenda item? Not right now. I have okay. your email though, so. Okay, great. All right. Thank nice you. to meet you and thank you very much. Look thank forward to you. seeing the fruits of your labor. Yes. Yeah. Okay, see ya. Yeah. So um, next on the agenda, uh, Skip, I'm gonna give you the screen. Um, okay, the screen. I don't need the screen, screen. Yes. No. instead of the floor. No, thank you. Thank you for giving me the screen. So uh, I know you, you folks probably understand that we're in the throes of putting together a town plan. So right now there are five members of the planning commission and a gentleman reached out to me, a gentleman named Michael Sadler, who's recently moved into South Woodbury. And he reached out and he wanted to know some information on the Planning Commission. And he's really keen on joining us and helping us through with this project. And then long-term staying on the Planning Commission uh, you know, to help with the zoning issues oh, wow. that, are, that are gonna crop up after the town plan gets, gets authorized and approved. So he's a new resident of Woodbury and you know his his credentials are impeccable. Let me just pull them yeah, up. Yeah, they're here. pretty amazing. Yeah, he currently works for the state of Vermont. He's an environmental analyst, and he's more mostly focused on technical reviews of permitting documents, design recommendation, compliance inspections, design analysis, hydrocads, regularly regulatory assistance. He's, he deals mostly with stormwater and stormwater runoff issues. Mm -hmm. But his uh, background, he's a, he has a background in project management, which is great. You know, he and I have, oh, gee. Is that, it's not here. It's my <laughs> stomach. <laughs> so, you know, he's a, he's a project manager as well. And he understands Gantt charts. Oh, so, oh my God! <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just granular like, geek hand charts. You're in heaven, Skip. Yeah, he, you know, he it was great. He actually knew what a task was and a milestone, mm -hmm. and a payment milestone. You know, so anyhow, we had we had a nice chat. Good. So, you know, I highly recommend that the select board authorize uh, this gentleman to join the Planning Commission. I think he would be a tremendous asset, especially, no, Diana, you can't. I'm not voting, I'm just raising my hand. <laughs> especially where we are now in the in the town plan rewrite. Mm -hmm. Do you yes, need Diana. authority to increase the membership of the Planning Commission from five to seven? You might check it's, that out. Well, I checked it out, Diana. Oh. So this, yeah. Did you think I wasn't going to check it out? Well, some people <laughs> might not know that's even an issue. 
<laughs> no, you can have up to nine members in a planning commission. Yeah, I know the planning that. commission, you know, is, the appointees are appointed by the legislative body in a town mm -hmm. or a municipality or city, whatever that is. So we have the three select board members here, and they can appoint just mm -hmm. by uh, they can do it unanimously or two out of three, but they have the authority to appoint folks to the planning right. commission. Right. And conversely, they have authority to ask people to leave the planning commission as well. Mm -hmm. So, so Bri Brian, Michael is a neighbor of ours. I don't know if you know him or not. I don't. He lives down at, he, um, at David and David Zahn's house. Okay. Partner of um, David's daughter. All right. They're the, oh. they're the folks that walk that big dog by the our houses. Them go by. Yeah. Um, is that the I Ridgeback? Hmm. Is that the Rhodesian Ridgeback? It uh, could be. I'm, it's a big dog. I don't know what kind of dog it is. <laughs> so are you looking to have him appointed tonight? Yes. Yep. I'm in, I'm in favor of that. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second that motion. Any any more discussion at all about that? All right. All all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Thank so you. He's on. Good. Great. I'll I'll drop him an email and start feeding him all the information we have Perfect. for the energy plan, which is in final draft mode, mm -hmm. and then all the information regarding uh, where we are right now in the project. Okay, could you send me his email address? Also, there's a, a meeting for um, coming up, um, actually it's this Friday, um, for some of the projects down in the village, some of the erosion mitigation projects and knowing of his background, I'd, I'd like to invite him to just sit in on it if, if he would, sure. if he can. Yeah, he, was, he cautioned me that anything that might interfere with his state job, mm -hmm. He would recuse himself, sure. from, you know, and that's that's only natural that mm -hmm. you know he wants to preserve his his employment with the state, and right. you know I totally get that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you can extend him the invitation. He may or may not. Yeah. To join you. Okay. Yeah, it may not work. It's kind of a late date to try to schedule something too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but he's going to be great. You know. Yeah. As soon yeah. as he said he knew what a Gantt chart was. He had my vote. That sold you, huh? <laughs> I don't second. want to know. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I still don't know, Paul, and I, I sort of know okay. what they are, but I still right. don't know. I'm at the point where it's like, I, I know enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I could teach you, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm slow. <laughs> You may not might, want to know. It might, it might work well with your, if you get your fire department funded. This is true. This is true. Could, I could write a project plan for the construction of the oh, perfect. building. But then it, it would cost you timelines money. and stuff. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. yeah. So anyhow, well, thank you so much. I thank you. Scott. Thank you. Yep. I appreciate your time. Right. And uh, I'll be signing off. Okay. Right. Have a good night. Again. See ya. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. So, town clerk's report. Oh, Jesus. That's you. Yeah. Pressure's on, pressure's on. Oh, and here we go. My list, my list, not very short. Perfect. So, I was, <laughs> all this crazy stuff that keeps changing, I'm learning every day. Last week, I learned that our printer, uh, L. Brown and Company, can uh, not only print our uh, print, address and mail our town reports. They can also, I contacted this other mailing company to talk about mailing the ballots. And then I found out that L. Brown can also stuff our envelopes, print the name on the envelope for every voter in town and send it out at their highly reduced postage rate. So oh. I don't have to be, Robin and I don't have to be spending this week stuffing envelopes. Perfect. So it's that like, good. yeah, cool. Yeah. One stop shopping, sounds good. Yeah, so our postcard that was, I was hoping that the postcard would go out earlier, but you know, anyways, postcard went out, I think on Friday, I got ours today. Yeah, and we got ours um, today. 
and then the uh, town report and the envelope with all the ballots in it should be in the mail within the next few days, mm -hmm. sometime later this week, I hope. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, we wait till you see the ballots for the school district of Hazen. A little they, complicated. Oh, they put in all this little stuff. I wish, I really wish I had reached out to them um, and say, why do we have to vote on paying zero dollars to the school board? I mean, that's the people are going to be so confused. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what, whatever. I didn't do it, and nobody else thought that. <laughs> so they just, I mean, they do Australian ballots all the time, but they've always only done the budget by Australian ballot. I don't know when these other important decisions got made, like whether or not to pay the school board or $2,500 to pay the school board treasurer. Anyways, now we're all gonna have to do those. So there's gonna be a lot of uh, counting, I'm sorry for Alberta on uh, town meeting night. It's gonna be a nightmare. But... Does the school ballot counting go somewhere else? Yeah, it all goes to yeah. her. So there's a double-sided ballot for Hardwick, for Hazen, and a double-sided ballot for uh, the elementary union district. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there'll be two, uh, two boxes to call out to Hardwick, and I'm going to try to line up a few more extra helpers for, um, to help with the county. And they have to do it in the fire department because they're not allowed to use the school. So I don't okay. know how she's going to manage to... Um, spread out a lot of people in that fire department. I guess they're going to have to take everything out. And, uh, they got quite a bit of room behind some of their rigs on one side. Yeah. I've only they, been in there when we were doing the dog registration and then they only opened up the front part. Yeah, no, they got they got quite a bit of space down there. Uh, hopefully there won't be a fire while there's... That time. would throw a little wrench in the works. Probably be outside. <laughs> yeah. You never know. So, so Diana, I'm willing to volunteer for the torture of going there and, and helping with the ballot counting. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to get Steve to do it too, because he's the one that signed the ballot for the uh -huh. deep fry yeah. option. I'm going to mm -hmm. have him take the Hazen box out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was something else. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I followed up, you know, I didn't come right out and ask whether every, every whether we had to put return postage on the envelopes. Hardwick is doing it and Greensboro isn't, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're already different. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the ballot, uh, the ballot is filled out. Well, there uh, is a nominee for a select board. His name is Chris Codius. Oh, wow. He's a geology professor, lives down the road here um, where John Bravent used to live. They got a couple okay. of kids. They've been here a while. And uh, so he, uh, there's still two auditor positions where there's no candidate and two cemetery commission positions where there's no candidates. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know the other thing is after all this learning of stuff last week, I finally decided that we can use the tabulator. Okay. So our part mm -hmm. is gonna be a lot easier. I went through all this trouble to try to um, minimize the ballot so we wouldn't have a counting nightmare and now it doesn't matter because it's going to use the tabulator. But the only thing that could make it complicated is there's a lot of write ins. And because we do have a select board nominee now, um, hopefully there won't be a ton of write ins. Because yeah. every time there's a write in, that ballot has to be counted by hand. Got it. Could, could the OSSU actually get a tabulator for? You know, I talked to uh, Alberta about that a while ago. And I said, you know, she, I said, at the time, I said you could even borrow ours because I wasn't planning to use it. Uh -huh. uh, their ballots are not made up in the right way. 
they weren't. But they could. They them. could be. If they, they could have been, but the, but I don't think hmm. the people who made up the ballots at OSSU had any idea what the options were. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. So thank you, Michael, for bringing that black beast upstairs. And sure. A couple yeah. weeks, you can bring it down to the town hall. Okay. Sure. Robin, I got to remember to have you uh, put the turn the water back on there. Just haul it to me when they're ready. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can do it. You do that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I turn our valve on. Hopefully, there's no leaks on the other side. Okay. <laughs> so, all the warnings are posted. Um, I sent the warning and to the Woodbury email list. And, uh, the uh, person from the LHS, who's the, pe the people that do the tabulators, um, our ballots are printed by L. Brown, and they know how to do it. They did all the ballots for the general election for the whole state. So mm -hmm. what did they do when we get ours? I finally gave her the go ahead last Monday when I got that last name and they'll uh, print up the ballots and they send a handful of them down to LHS, which is the company that programs the tabulator. Mm -hmm. And then they'll send us, either send us or bring us the cards that go in the tabulator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So. Hopefully it'll go smoothly. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Any anything else, Diana? Any any questions for Diana? Thank you for taking care of all that, Diana. Yeah. Well, it's been it's been interesting. Lots of new and different stuff. I'm trying to keep uh, Robin up to date, although she won't have a. Uh, I mean, the new clerk <laughs> won't have. Uh, another election for a couple of years so you're hoping things to be less interesting in the next year right yeah, yeah everything's going to go back to normal needs to be less interesting we've had interesting for a while yeah really okay okay so um i don't see brandy here so i'm just going to briefly um she read off some uh, just some figures that she printed out um for me to share um so for uh, revenue to the town from the last couple of weeks, um, let's see, cash receipts total um, $2,917. Um, delinquent taxes uh, collected uh, total $2,613 and 51 cents. Um, and then um, Payroll um, totaled um, $10,953 and accounts payable uh, totaled um, $10,894. Um, so, so she transferred uh, $45,000 from the money market fund into the general fund. Um, and then uh, just some updates from, um, from Brandy that she created an, an invoice um, for the uh, uh, grant that the Conservation Commission got for the town trail. And I think it finally, it did get all filled out um, and she sent it in to the, um, the agency that's overseeing the grant and is, is still waiting for um, payment for that, for reimbursement basically. Um, there's an equipment grant um, that, um, trying to get some other things checked off on the list of it, I remember it was a like a month or two ago there was this list of different things passive came through and they inspected the town office and the town garage and some of the other town buildings and they had um, recommendations to remedy different uh, situations that they um, they were concerned about um, one was behind the firehouse Think that the fire department took care of cutting yeah, a bunch of fix, yeah the tree that yeah. was touching the building yeah tim higgins apparently will be coming to the town office to um, rectify some electrical things that they pointed out 
And then there's a string of things down at the town garage um, that I'll probably go down um, and show them to Greg um, and, and get them to take care of those. Um, did you have a question, me. Diana? Well, Greg was here today and he saw Brandy's note and he said it was his understanding that all that stuff was finished. They had taken pictures of it and sent it to Larry Smith at BLCT. Okay, so, all right. Well, I believe it has been. The same thing. Okay. What? Yeah, I believe it has been taken care of. Greg, okay. Greg and I were over there doing it one day. Okay, good. All right. Well, then I won't do that. So like be it's easy. already done. So whatever. Brandy has an email that has to be responded to, I guess. Somehow. Yeah, because they, they have a, what they'll want is a plan of corrective action or you to send them a note saying it's all been repaired. Yeah, there's some type of form that she has to fill out. Yeah. And then um, the reason that the town will get reimbursed 50% of any costs that we, the town incurred in uh, making those corrections. So that, that's why Brandy's kind of on this to get, to get the, uh, everything completed. Um, I guess if, the, if we don't complete everything, um, the town would get 40%, but you know, Brandy's going for the 50%, so. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, so, um, okay. Yeah, he didn't good. tell us that when the guy came around making all those recommendations. Yeah, I didn't know that from the first, first time it was presented to us, but, mm -hmm. um, but I do now. So good, um, okay. And that's pretty much all that, um, that she had for me to share. So I think we're good with the town treasurer report. Any any questions about that at all? Good. Not that I'd be able to answer them, but no. I and we all I got my little packet from her, so okay, all right. The reading materials right here. Yeah, want to sit and read it. Okay. Um, did you have a question, Robin? No. Okay. All right. So I guess we can move on. Um, to the town highway report. And I'll give you the screen, Chuck, the moment. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to say. I haven't, I tried calling Greg today and I missed him and okay. I haven't talked to him for over a week. Okay. Um, with the low pro, I called Greg and told him we were going to put smaller tires on it. And he told, he told me that he had talked to uh, Charlie Boyce and that that truck could be ordered with that size tires on 1100 tires on it. Uh -huh. And he gave me the number and I called him and the guy down there said that the tire size wouldn't make any difference with. Okay. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So Greg and I decided that, you know, they're all mounted up all on it that we're going to leave them. If we yeah. decide okay. something, we'll do it in the spring. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, other than that, that's about all I got. I, I, at our last select board meeting, there was a, in the bills, it looked like we had paid for the, um, the mower brush cutter. Is that true? Have we, have we ordered that, paid for it or? Yeah. I we wanted don't payment in advance. Yeah. Oh, they did. We, so we paid guess. the bill, yeah. Okay, yeah. That should be in. here sometime yeah. in the end of the second two weeks, April, first week of May or something. Sure. Yeah. Good. I got a couple. Yeah. Put, that. Put it right to work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just as soon as it, the roads are hard enough to hold the loader yep. up. Yep. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> uh, one thing I think we need to think about maybe next month, the greater we're having a problem losing the antifreeze, and we think we got that because mm -hmm. the pressure cap was bad on the radiator. Mm -hmm. But the air compressor is putting a fair amount of oil into the air tanks. Hmm. And I think we need to talk to Caterpillar about having the air compressor replaced on that. Okay. Yeah. And I would like to see it happen before it was time to put it to work. Okay. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Do you think it should happen before, like if we get more snow, I know they often use that to push the banks back. Would it be good to try to get it fixed before that? Oh, I, it won't make that much difference. It won't make that much difference. Okay. I, when May, when, when it gets it's work, working every day, yeah. yeah. It's going to be working every day. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm thinking maybe that I'll get a hold of Caterpillar and see about making an appointment for them to go up and at least check it out. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. That yep. sounds good. Get her done as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah well, 
Yeah, sometime in March. I'd like to see it done in March. Yeah. Okay. By the end of March. So, yeah. but I'll call them someday this week. Okay. Yeah. I got a couple of emails just complimenting the road crew on the condition of the roads this winter. So, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, you can pass along for me. Too. They've been they've been doing a pretty good job. Uh, they've yeah. kept kept it, and it's the the time frames we need the roads taken care of. They're keeping them taken care of, and and coming again if they need to. So it's it's uh, you can pass along. They're doing a good job. Good. I will. I will. Uh, Greg and I talked about it quite a lot last Sunday. Uh, Kelsey Silk called and couldn't get his car home. Yeah. And he had to come out on a Sunday and saying that. Greg said there won't really any need to, but yeah, that's a, I called him and asked him to. So okay, yeah, that's a chronic problem for that person. Yeah. That's what I hear. Yeah, because I got the call, and before I could talk to him, he had called you apparently that day. Oh yeah, he had already taken care of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So other than that, that's about all, all right. I got. I'm glad Thanks. to hear they're doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. Lucky there hasn't been much snow. Yeah, well, well last couple weeks so, yeah. we're we're having that one to two inches a day type yeah. snow, which is a pain. Just yeah, yeah just a pain in the butt. Yeah. yeah. Um. I I can't think of anything else. I guess. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Chuck at all? No, I'm good. No. Okay. I'm good. So um, we'll move on to the personnel policy, and I'll I'll get that up on the screen. <clears throat> and I think um, you know, we could just, I did incorporate the uh, changes that we had discussed in previous meetings and Paul, I got in the things that you sent. I just, I got them cut. Decipher and, this. Yeah. 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 We, we can make we it. look at them and talk about them. Yeah. So let me get that up on the screen here. Hang on a second. I do the uh, share screen. Um, Hang on. Uh, let me go back here. There, uh, there it is. Okay, so I want to get rid of this. Um, hang on, I got to get rid of faces here so I can see the thing. Um, well. Okay, um, I should be able to see if I can make this thing move now. Okay, so let's get to, so um, I'll stop when I see some red. So under, there are different parts where the um, road foreman had been designated um, as the direct supervisor. So I, I changed those to road commissioner. Um, okay. I think there's just a couple spots. Um, so all of this that we're looking at now is all, you know, for hiring somebody new and kind of the steps that we would want to follow that are designated in the personnel policy. So we'll be dealing with this when we, uh, when we initiate um, uh, a third full-time employee. So this is stuff we'll... What's your pro, pro, uh, the probation period? How long is that? Uh, th six months, if I, if I remember right. Let's get, yeah. Right there. Um, yep. Town, all new town six employees, uh, six month probationary period. Um, and then during that period, the employee can be terminated at any time um, for any reason, really. Um, Does that have to include in any plowing before they can get off their probation? Well, I guess it depends on when they start. Yeah, that would be the issue. Yeah. So, and I think we're looking to have someone start probably for summer well, we, if the budget we could, passed, we could start that 
July 1st, right? Right, yeah. So may, it could probably include some of, um, we'll, we'll figure that out, but that's a good point, Robin. We might wanna have um, the six month period take in a little bit of winter plowing. Um, I think it should. Okay, yeah. okay, all right. All right, so we'll, at some yeah. point, so, at some point soon, um, we should probably get that on the agenda and start, um, you know, talking, discussing um, yeah. the hiring of a third fund. Because well, we'll when that. after town meeting day, you know, we're assuming that budget passes and we can start working on that would probably yeah. be the appropriate time. That would be yeah. the appropriate time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so let's see. So these are all. Stuff that we read and forget, pretty much. Um, some of it's kind of boilerplate. So, okay, so here we go. Um, so th this is pretty much what we're, we've been working on, Chuck, is the paid leave time. Um, and there are yeah. a bunch of different categories. So um, everything that's in red in this section um, has been on the the revision for a while now. We looked at it this summer. Uh, I added, um, I just added a definition for employees because technically the only real um, employees that are a part of the personnel policy are the town highway department members, the road crew. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, this other section for um, green is, is one of the changes that we discussed this summer fall about, um, let's see, the, the paid leave time um, with the exception of sick time. And, and I, I just put that in, it, it seemed like if somebody's sick, they probably don't need to get permission from the road commissioner. No. Um, they shouldn't have to, I wouldn't think. Yeah, yeah. Especially in our COVID times. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but any other paid leave time, um, basically, um, that they would need approval from the road commissioner. So I would just um, say instead of having it as suggested, just make that a mandatory language. Okay. Employee Did shall I request paid leave time on a day for day basis. Okay. Um, oh, suggested, right. So make, right here. Actually, I wonder if I can do right. change it to more of a mandatory language. Right. Let's see if I could do that right now. Uh No pressure. Yeah, no, okay. Well, I'll, re I'll remember that, hopefully. <laughs> That's an easy one. Because that would leave it up to someone's opinion and we didn't want to do that. Right, That I'm, I'm aware of, of that type of wording, yeah. So let me just make a note so I remember. Um, so, and I, I'm gonna get a copy of the, that uh, request form from uh, brandy so that we could have that right in the um, you know in the end in the personnel policy probably in one of the appendixes at the end or um, um, so I kept the wording for the day for day basis um, put an example in um, but then um, again this is kind of a suggested thing the last sentence requests for leave leave our best made as far in advance as possible to ensure. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, let's see, moving on here. Where's the, uh, whoops, hang on, went too far. Come on. Okay, so we're done with that. So sick time. Uh, this is all. This is nothing new. That's in the red. We've looked at that earlier this summer. Yeah. Um, and then the criteria, which were was part of the old personnel policy. Um, and then vacation time. Uh, hang on. So we can get us back up. Oh goddamn. Being fussy. Excuse my French. Um, <laughs> or whatever, I guess that's pretty much English, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was garbled, we didn't hear it. Okay. <laughs> now, how can I make this go just a little bit? Ah. You know, while you're doing that, I'd like to make a comment. Sure, anytime you wanna make a comment, Diana, please do. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. Um, as far as the town clerk and town treasurer being 18 hours a week, it, I don't really think that should be in the personnel policy. I think it's really up to the clerk and treasurer how much time they need to do their job. Well, I think that's I mean, 18 what hours the, a week has worked for, for us. For five. Right. The, the 18 hours a week is based, that's kind of the prorated basis. Um, but any leave time could be prorated based on the actual hour. You know, if the next town clerk decides she wants to work 25 hours a week and have an assistant only for four hours a week, you know, it's just. Yeah, well, that's that's something that would probably need to be discussed with the select board and we could change it then. Um, I think, you know, that 18 hours came from basically looking at the average number of hours that uh, the town clerk and the town treasurer had um, had um, you know what they had and from timesheets. I think that's where that came from. Well, I think it would, as far as I'm concerned, it carried over from when Marsha was here. No, that was a change after Marsha. Really? I, I remember. Started, I, I, think I, was, I remember were, being on the select board when we did that. Basically, those were the hours that the office was open. <sighs> Michael's computer is having a yeah no I, I can't get it to go just it was still going nice and slow for a while okay so this is um, okay I figured it out okay here we go so okay so here's vacation time um, so yeah we can we can discuss this 18 hours a week, um, maybe when Brandy's here or, or when Robin is, or when we have a new town clerk. <laughs> so um, make that assumption. So um, I crossed out the line about the end of every fiscal year, the town may compensate an employee for any vacation time accrued. We had mentioned that we no longer wanted to do that. Right. And that basically the only time that an employee would receive um, a payment for accrued um, vacation time is is when they um, decide to leave their job. Correct. Which I think it, which is stated here. Um, who resign? The last sentence: let, uh, Any employee who resigns from employment with the town will be compensated for no more than 160 hours of accrued and unused vacation leave. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll delete that sentence. Um, and then personal time is, don't think much has changed there. Um, this is all pretty much the same. So here we are, here we are at comp time. Um, So the, this is in red. I, I should have probably had it in in green, the new the new text. Um, but it's pretty much. Um, so we have, actually, I guess probably instead of having May, I should probably have will. Right. Again, or shall. Yeah, they shall request yeah. compensatory moth from that. So what the idea was, and I and Chuck and Wayne, we kind of talked about this some of the employees are still wanting to get comp time. And what this would do is leave it at the discretion of the road commissioner. Mm -hmm. If, you know, if someone says, Hey, I worked eight hours today, I'd like to put it in its comp time. He could say yes. And then it kind of sets the rules for the use of that time. Yeah. Along with our leave request policy. At the discretion of the uh, road commissioner or the um, crew? Leaders? Yes. The road, the road commissioner. commissioner. Um, do we want to have some kind of written request? Well, it would be the leave form. Well, oh, as far as asking for it? Yes. Uh, comp, I mean, if, if a person wanted to cash in on their comp time, then they would have to use the paid leave request form. But do we want to have them request? So, for so I think the request would be the signing of the um, timesheet. Okay. If you, if you sign the timesheet with comp time on it, it would mean that it had been approved. Okay. Does All the right. road commissioner sign the timesheets now? 
No. Electronically um, or otherwise? No. Yeah, that's the only gotcha. I know you were in the summer, right, Chuck? Yes. Okay. So we, we have to deal with the winter time. Again, we're yeah. dealing with Chuck now, but this could be anybody at some point. And if they decide they want it, they really, they all got my telephone number. They really Correct. want to call me and say, hey, can I put this in comp time? Sure. Yeah, because this is kind of a middle ground to having it unlimited or just getting rid of it all together. Yeah. I, and yeah, and it gives it gives us some control over when it right. actually happens, and yeah, as long as it you've got it situated and it, it reads like you do, that it don't get all bunched up in June. I don't care. Right. right. Well, because you, you'd have to say yes, I'm going to let you earn comp time, and then you'd also have to approve when they take it. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so if, you know, if they have it, and the, the limit is, we could limit, we could make it less than forty hours. Forty hours was what was. Yeah, in that's not before. a bad limit. That that's one yeah. week. Yeah, one week. Yeah, okay. but the thing of it is, you're paying them time and a half in comp time. You should cut that back so you get a week off, and not forty hours of comp time. Well, yeah, they'd have to work what thirty hours to get that forty whatever. hours. Yeah. yeah, I don't know exactly what it is, but that's, yeah, whatever. That, I think that should be their limit that they can earn up to one. 40 hour week of comp time. Right. And that's what this is saying. It's got 40 hours as the maximum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's 40 hours of comp time. And that you're paying time and a half for your comp time. Right. Well, when we pay comp time, I believe we pay those out as straight time hours. Uh, I don't believe that. That's no, no, big comp well, time is, is basically replacing overtime. Right, right. Yes. So what I'm saying, if you work an hour of well, how this usually works is you work an hour. We'll have to Brandy can clear it up when if she was here, I, but Actually, what, it's it's here in the text, Paul. Hang on, let yeah, me get there. Yeah, because what happens is you work an hour and you get an hour and a half of comp time. That's that fixes it because the, the comp time's paid back at straight time rates. Well, yeah. what I'm saying is that you should limit it so that they get a week's pay for free. correct. They yeah. can have 30 hours of comp time, but it, they'll still get paid for well, 40. Move down where so we'd have to uncross this line, Michael, where your arrow is. It right. says comp time will be accrued at a rate of 1.5 hours of time for each hour worked. Okay. For no more than 40 hours. So what that does, Chuck, is they would it would it would necessarily set it straight at 40 hours at straight time because they're earning it at time and a half. Yeah. So let let's go through these terms. So the first first um, bullet that's um, up here. Um, an employee may accrue a maximum of 40 hours of comp time, or do we want to say 30 hours? Well, it, the next line down fixes it, Mike, because you, okay. when you it's accrued okay. by earning, you earn it. Okay. Because if you work an hour, you get an hour and a half of time. Yeah. So you'll get to your 40 hours. When they pay out that 40 hours, it's at straight time because okay. you've earned more time than what you actually worked. Okay. So we'll keep that sentence there. I'll, I'll incorporate that. Well, I would put the... that one back because yeah. that fixes the problem that Chuck had talked about. Okay. So second bullet keep. All right. Okay, um, let's just look at some of the other. All right, see so right at the next line says an employee receiving payment for accrued but unused comp time will be paid at the hourly rate, yeah. straight time. Yeah. So I guess you want to un erase that line too. Keep that one too. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and probably the fourth one. Fourth, yeah, so it brings kind of all that stuff back in again. Yeah. yeah. How about the very last bullet? Well, we kind of covered that up above, so we could probably okay. take that one out. Okay, all right. So third, yeah, I'll look, I'll, I'll look at that again and, and redo it and then send it back out to you guys. Um, Everybody kind of on the same page. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so everything up here I think that's a good middle ground. That way it's still available. But if, you know, if the road commissioner thinks we don't need it right now, you don't get it. Yeah. So how about this um, second paragraph? This was um, kind of an explanation that, that you sent, Paul, with the state. Is, does that sound clear to everybody? Um, and I'll explain what it means. If you, if you earn, so if I earn an hour of comp time between July 1st of this past summer and June 30th, I have the following this year and the following year to use it. Yeah. Or I would be paid for it. Or I would be told I had to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, it's always kind of keeping a rolling, a rolling average of time. It, 
your other choice is that it, it kind of stops the problem Chuck had last year of, well, I earned eight hours of comp time. I got to use it in June. Nope. If you earned it in this fiscal year, you got the next fiscal year to use it too. So you don't have to burn it up. Yeah. That's and, why that's written like that. And as long as there's a limit on it so that they can't earn another 40 hours in the next correct. year. It's, it's a maximum of 40 total hours. Right. Yeah. So if they got 40 hours and they say they got to take it off June 1st, the only reason that would be true is it had been earned the previous uh, fiscal year. Right. If they earn yeah. it this winter, they got all next winter to use it too, or all summer. Yeah. Right. So it just, I'm just thinking of another scenario, Paul. So if they did sit on it until let's say June uh, 29th of the end of the fiscal year following when they, when they, um, had accrued it what would be their i mean obviously they're they're going to be coming to the road commissioner a day ahead of time and saying i'm going to take nick i got to take a day off. off yeah um do we do we want to have kind of some kind of wording that um avoids that scenario well the last um, sentence kind of does that if for okay. someone who's letting it build up for two years saying the town that's basically saying the town can tell you you have to use some of this time Okay. We don't have to pay you. Okay. All right. That's why I figured I'd copy what someone else did because they've already been through every nuance of. <laughs> yes. It's always helpful to see what other people have done. Because um, again, I, I had this at my own work. They'd let me build up too much time and they just walked up and said, you need to take a couple weeks off because we're not going to pay you at the end of June. So yeah. <laughs> gotta take it off. Okay. All right. We should check with Brandy and see if there's some report in NEMREX that will give you a printout of Help keep track of it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah, I, I thought that this is the one thing I also wanted to run by Brandy is how to keep track of the time. I know it's a little complicated, but it, it avoids the problem of being forced to use a bunch of time at the, which is what our issue is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm making a note of that too. We'll ask her that. Cause that, I, again, I didn't really want to adopt this piece until Brandy had said, yes, I can track it. Well, yeah, we won't really adopt it until, um, you know, Brandy's had a good look at it. We've had a, a VLCT, somebody from VLCT sort of take a look at it. And I, I guess I'd like to have the road crew and the town clerk and town treasurer yeah. all, all look at it first. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then once once it's sort of gone through the the hearing stage, we'll call it, um, and then and we've got everything so that everybody's okay with it, um, then I think we can adopt it. But right. I'd like to try to get this adopted pretty much in time for um, the beginning of the hiring process. Yeah, and spring maintenance. And spring maintenance, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of, is there any way you could change that from June 30th to June 1st? You have to use it by year B by the 1st of June rather than- Well, I 30th. think we could put any date we want in there. Yeah, it could we could put June. any date we want. You could have the year begin on June first and end on May thirty, whatever you know. I think I think what Chuck Chuck is and correct me if I'm wrong, Chuck, but I think what Chuck is thinking of is that if we have it by June first, then there's a, a month left before the uh, fiscal year ends. Exactly. That, you know, they have yeah. to, you know, they have to come before the road commissioner and say, you know, uh, I've only got a month left. I've got forty hours of comp time. I want to take it off before the fiscal year ends. So then there's at least a month to figure out how to schedule it so it doesn't screw everything up. I got you. Yeah, I'm game for anything, it works. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm a little gun shy after last year. That's all. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's the issue. We can't have a circumstance where everybody takes the month of June off. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. You could even right. say May May 1st. You know, if, these, if somebody has been sitting on the comp time for let's say almost a year or over a year. Um, right. You know, we they need to you know either make an arrangement to take it off um, when it's not going to be compromising the work that needs to be done and, and giving you right. know giving them a couple it, months. Um, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't want to take time off mud season, but that's an ideal time for them to take it off. Right. right. Go to go someplace warm and dry. Right. So if you. May 1st, I, yeah, I like May 1st better, I think. Okay, all right. Okay. We'll, we'll put that in. I made a note of it. So we'll get it rewritten, Michael, then we can visit it again, just when it's yes. not so cloudy. 
Yeah, we'll look at it again um, next at our next meeting. But I think it kind of accomplishes our goals. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. I think it does too. Yeah, I do too. I, you know, I don't, but the guys, but grudge the. Oh, did we lose Chuck? We we lost your sound, Chuck. Can't we lost your sound? I don't know if you can hear us either. Oh well. Um, there you yeah, go. Here you are. You're back. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good um, meeting. Meeting halfway kind of thing. Um, yep. And it, it and I think Still it there. solves the problem. Allows the road commissioner to turn it off if if it's being misused. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. So. All right, so let's move. Holiday stuff is pretty much yeah. set. Um, so I guess uh, that's a question. I think this question in bold here in red um, is more a question for like the VLCT review, I think. Right, because yeah, they, they just wanted to make sure that, that it counts as hours actually work a holiday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, insurance. The insurance gets a little confusing over who gets it and who doesn't, but sometimes I think it would be easier just to have the town clerk and town treasurer have their own separate little section of what they <laughs> get and don't get. But. Uh, okay, so I'm. This is all boilerplate stuff. I'm gonna. I'm trying to get to that pay chart. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna let it go slowly, so I have we some control over we'll here. Overdo it here. Yeah. This is all boiler, and this is, this is kind of the employee discipline. It's um. You know, if we did have a problem, and there's just different steps to take, um, in the process of um. You know, like a verbal warning, a written warning, um, and then um, actually uh, firing somebody. And they're pretty much steps that the town um, should follow. Otherwise, um, there are consequences. Um, back in when Harry was the road foreman, um, we fired somebody pretty much on the spot. And um, because we didn't follow any of these steps, um, we were eligible for paying um, for um, unemployment insurance, unemployment payments for a while. Um, but if we had followed these steps, um, here it is here, right in this paragraph of verbal warning, written warning, suspension. Um, usually that then there's a meeting for them to kind of correct, correct their, their ways somewhere in there. Um, and then termination. Um, so, uh, let's see. Okay, so we're getting there. Okay, so there's. Um, okay, here's. Here we go. I'm gonna move this over. So here's. Here's the old chart. And then I put in, Paul, the steps. Right. So the explanation here is we had the chart and that we were assigning steps every year. This chart copies the state's pay chart and their steps are based on the numbers of years you've worked. Mm -hmm. um, so the thought is here, we'd either keep the steps in place and you get steps when they come. And then we would negotiate our annual raises, if any, that we were gonna do on top of that. So some years you'd have employees getting steps and some years you wouldn't have employees getting steps based on how long they'd been there. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, so, so I think to make this step chart that we have work, as Diana pointed out, we were giving the 3% raises every year based on this chart, which I don't yep. know was the intent. Um, the right. step chart copied out of the state is what fixes it, or we just get rid of it and negotiate pay increases every year without yeah. staff. So you could yeah. you could do both. You could have a uh, your little tiny cost of living raise like you did this year. One Correct. Percent. That's what I would and recommend doing. You still yeah. have some reward for people who stay for two years, you know, like after two years, give them another step. 
every Correct. year, that, that's a little much, but. Yeah, this is copies of the state system, year one through five or one, well, year step one's a six month step. You're on step one for probation. After your six months, you go to step two, which is one year. The next four steps are one year, then it's two years, then it's three years. That's exactly, I copied it right out of the state contract, okay. which is where this chart came from. Yeah. So would we, we probably would want to create our own chart then at some point to go uh, the chart. With... The chart's okay. You just, uh, okay. once, you know, if you ever well, get, I get the... it. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Right. So we'll keep the chart um, and then um, somehow relate the steps. So, relate you know, this... using as an example, if you look at road crew, full-time pay grade eight, Someone brand new you hired off the street with no experience, you're gonna hire at 1725 an hour. In six months, they're gonna to go to 1787. And then one year from that six month, they'll go to the step three mm -hmm. of, of uh, 1837. And one year from that, they would go to 1888. And then one year from that, they go to 1940, but then it switches to two years. It'd okay. be two years before they got to the step six after that. Okay. okay. So, uh, but they're still like, getting a cost of living increase every correct, year. Correct, correct. Yeah. So we would we would separate. We th that way we we purposefully make a decision on what a cost of living increase is going to be, mm -hmm. and then you you give that, and then you, if you have a step that year, good for you. Yeah. So we could we could put that language in there that there would be a cost of living increase. Correct. We would negotiate that way. Someone who's not getting a step, if they were going to get a one percent or two, whatever we were going to give, that that would still happen. Okay. So uh, what I'll do is I'll try to put in some um, some language to go with this, um, try to make it a complete uh, unit or whatever you want to call right. it. And, and we, we can look at that um, next time the too. Other, the, the other dicey part of this is when you do give an annual cost of living, uh -huh. it, bumps, it bumps these steps up to that. So for example, if you give a 1%, the road, the new full-time road crew member would go 17.25 plus the 1%. So that every year that chart would change a little bit. Okay, so that would be, it would be- so it's, just, it's a little bit of clerk work. It's, a, it's, it's yeah. that you're always, you're always, you always fit somewhere on that chart with your hourly rate. Yeah. But it could also be uh, like a formula. The top, somebody who stays one year, they get the, whatever the annual increase for everybody is. And then on their anniversary of the, a, a full year, they get like another percent or every two years they get. So if, if, if each step, yeah, I like that idea of a formula, Diana. If each step as it is now represents about 3%. About 3%. Yeah, so we could we could mention that um, the, the, like if it went from step one to step two, that um, the, the increase to step two would be based on 3% of the present, um, whatever the present pay rate is. That sure. would work. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then we, and we could just leave, well. It's, and you it's wouldn't nice need to, this, so you wouldn't need this chart. Just replace, just make a policy that. Sure. The select okay. board is going to every year decide an overall uh, cost of living uh, increase for all the staff people. And then uh, every, whenever they complete one year, two years of service, they get another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. because again, I'm not married to this chart. It was just, this makes that chart work. If we wanna do something does, different, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, well, let, let me try to put something together. Sure. That, and we'll, I'll, I'll pro hopefully I can do that um, and get it to everybody so we can look at it for a bit. And if there are any suggestions, um, could just send them to me, but we'll look, I'll, I'll if, at the latest, I'll have this ready to look at again at our next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. The good Sweet. thing is, the other good thing about the chart is that you it gives you some starting salaries, and we don't have those anywhere else. Right. Right. But maybe those should be negotiated every time somebody is hired. Well, again, yeah, that that's provided for in the pay because you can hire someone in grade. You know, for example, if we hired another road person that's already got ten years experience, you're going to have to slot them in that chart somewhere. Right. That's what we did with Grizz. You know, he had lots of experience. Um, so we basically yeah. negotiated a, a step to a starting point as one of the steps. You know, we did that with Laura also. Yeah, we did that with Laura. Yeah. Starting the assistant town clerk at 10. I mean, the, it's out of date anyways, because yeah. I think 1066 isn't even the... Uh, minimum wage is it yeah I'm right not sure what it is but and that's my point if we stick with this chart every time you 
increase everybody's pay 1%, say you've got to raise every slot on this chart 1%. That's yeah. how you stay ahead of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try to think of a formula. Okay, yeah, let's let's try to come up with a formula. Yeah, because if you can't, you could do it with this chart. It's just you'd have to do it every time you crave a raise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cost of living, it adjusts the chart. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's there's probably some spreadsheet wizard that can make that magic work, but it isn't me. It, Mr. Skip <laughs> Lindsay could do that for <laughs> us, I think. And he probably would be happy to do it. Yep. So that's possible then, you know, he could, Skip could build it in that we could just enter the uh, annual cost of living increase and it would automatically adjust the chart for us, but I don't know yeah. that. I bet Brandy could do that too. That's basically sounds like a Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, I'm sure world. you could do this in a spreadsheet. It's just a matter yeah. of somebody smarter than I am in that department. Yeah, smarter than me too. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure I could do it, but it's one of those things I've chosen not to learn very good, yes, very well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so we could either have Brandy, maybe Brandy and Skip could could um, fix that for us. Okay, um, and I think that's pretty much it with the personnel policy. Um, there's, let's see, let me just, move. so there's more of the steps didn't fit on that same page. Um, so, and then this, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, this is kind of an overview of- Benefits, and yeah. Employee benefits. Um, and I, I guess we, I kind of have to look at this and like, I know that at this point we don't have the Vermont Health Connect Platinum Plan anymore. So this needs to be updated a little bit too. It's an MVP plan um, at this point. So I'll, I'll go through, maybe I'll go through this with Brandy and we'll just update this mm -hmm. at some point here. Uh, And then this is um, this is kind of a passive thing. There is a whole this is a whole booklet here, but there's a I think um, um, Harry and I went to a, a VLCT passive workshop um, on you know what to do about different um, if you suspect that there are different drug issues or alcohol issues for your employees. Um, uh, this is a whole manual that I have. I have it um, on my computer. The whole thing. If anybody wants a copy of it, I'll be glad to sh share it with you. Um, but um, so the, I know when we revised the personnel policy, one of the last times we just put this in here, um, just so the you know our employees were aware of it. That's pretty much it. That's okay. So that regarding that drug. Drug oh, and, yeah. There is someone called a DER. I think it's the drug. Some, anyways, I think I'm it and I shouldn't be it. It should be somebody that's more involved with the road crew that would take responsibility. I mean, I, I'm the only one that has email, I guess. They have my email. So when it's time to test somebody, they're through the random testing, I get the information. But you know, all that's going to have to be transferred over. I don't know if you'd want to have Chuck or someone else do that or, mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what Diana's talking about, Chuck, is that there are, um, is it passive that does that, Diana, yeah. or is it? Yeah. 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 Are the, so the town's insurer um, does random drug testing of all town employees. So just what the they road, just the just the uh, just the road crew basically the um, drivers with the, the the drivers with CDL licenses CDL. is that correct yeah so I mean it's called a random test but they usually notify Diana of when it's going to happen so that they can be assured that the that the road crew member is at the town garage to um, pee into the cup. So, That's not like um, a road commissioner thing. Yeah, yeah, it does kind of. It should fit into the road commissioner's slot. Yeah. So are you okay, Chuck, if we tag you with that? Yeah. He'd have to go to the next training that they have. Right. I'm willing to be, yeah, turn your mic back on, Chuck. Your mic's off. I'll, I'll, I'll fly down to Florida and bring him the training. It's no problem. Okay. <laughs> You're too eager. <laughs> Probably would be a good thing, you know, for any road commissioner to um, go through that training. Um, I know they pretty much talk about what to be, to look out for, for different types of 
uh, drugs and, and Michael, can you turn Chuck's mic back on? Yeah, uh, I got it. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I, could, I guess I could have done that. Yeah, yeah. I think you can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm fine with doing that. Um, okay. The I phone call and make sure that somebody's there to get tested. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll start sending you some of the emails so you can see what what they do. I okay. think it's Thank some you. kind of a new system that that involves some kind of a new sign-on that I haven't tackled yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. Probably, yeah. So I'm going to stop the screen share. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. All right. Um, anything else about the personnel policy? At all? No. Shaping up. Okay. That's kind of the end of our agenda. Um, is there any? I don't really have any. Oh, I do want to mention, um, especially. Since I have Chuck and um, Robin here, um, this coming Friday, and select board members are welcome to um, take part in this. I can give you the contact information, but this coming Friday, the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission <coughs> and Dubois and King will be um, giving a presentation on um, what's called a 60% designs for two of the sites in the village um, where we've been working on this um, long drawn out kind of erosion mitigation devices um, mm -hmm. for to help keep stuff from going into the Kingsbury branch. And the two sites that we're gonna be looking at the 60% designs for on Friday, it's from one to 2 p.m. are the school off the school parking lot and behind the annex building. So those are gonna be, um, you know, pretty much indirectly involved with the summer work that we're going to do in that area that we got the Better Roads grant for. Right. I was thinking of maybe inviting the civil engineer from Ruggles too, just so that I kind of want to have everybody kind of working together on this project um, so that Make whatever sense. we do to the roads um, doesn't, you know, compromise what they're trying to do with these basins and vice versa, maybe have the engineers Kind of become aware of the different thoughts. That's at one o'clock Friday, Michael. Yeah, one o'clock. Um, okay, they said I, I, I should be. I got to get my second COVID shot Friday, so everybody's okay. getting sick. So I, I don't think I'll get sick till Saturday, though. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, and you know, this is just a presentation, so I'm not going to worry about warning it as a select board meeting. You know, right. even though we have no decisions are being made. No decision. We're just taking in information and and uh, providing input into the design. Um, so the, the, this process is, is, is that they've come and done some testing. Um, there've been a couple of meetings about some of their thoughts um, and they put together that it's called a 60% design where you know they've got a pretty good idea of what they would like to have happen there. But, and then the um, property owners, town folks um, get to look at the design, hear the presentation, have input into it. And then they take that input and go back and, and work on the designs again, and then um, come before the town again with a, basically a, a finished design, 100% design. So it started out originally as a 30% design, um, and now it's, which was just kind of a rough thing before there was any testing done. And um, so this is kind of step two in, in the steps. Um, the other two sites, the one between the fire station and behind the post office, they've got to do some more, um, a little bit more testing, probing uh, before they can come up with a design for that. And then the fourth site over on Church Street next to the Methodist Church, um, when we dug the test pit, it was all a ledge there. So they had a, the idea of a, another site across the road um, that's basically property for the um, car mechanic place and I guess technically Larry Rossi still owns the property and um, well he yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't think he does now okay well anyway um, he has a mortgage that's all okay well they they didn't want uh, the infiltration basin to be there so um, the other <laughs> thought was well maybe putting it over across uh, Cabot Road in the park 
And by the time we kind of came to that thought, um, winter set in. And so they have, they in the spring, early summer, they may want to dig a test pit there if we're all okay with, with um, having that, the basin, the infiltration okay. basin there. Um, hi, Fred. So, um, so this would be for those two sites. Um, and uh, we'll see what they have to, what the presentation is. But so Robin is, uh, you know, basically with the women's auxiliary kind of owning the property there, you're welcome to be there if you would like. Um, okay. And uh, Chuck, just with your, you know, I know that we had talks with the engineer when he was doing the testing, you know, I, I think you will probably have some input on this whole thing. Um, yeah, I'll be there. Okay, great. And Brian, you're welcome to come too if you want. Um, it's, it's all all stuff for yeah, the just send, you'll send us the link then and then I'll remember I'll to send the it. link. Um, and I, as far as I know from the school, I think Larry Eldred is going to try to be there. Um, I haven't heard back from the principal and I just it's more of a courtesy, you know, technically that's town property. So, um, right. but I, I do want to try to just include whoever might be involved or directly in, or indirectly involved. Um, and I might uh, give that uh, civil engineer from Ruggles just a heads up and see if he could attend too. I think it would be good for him to, mm -hmm. to see what Dubois and King is thinking of and how that relates to the design that he can. And if, did we give Dubois and King their whole, he's got all that road profile on his computer and everything. I believe so, yeah. They have that, they don't have to redo it. Yeah, yeah. We already dug I, test pits and things on the road for him. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think I've shared any of the information from um, from Ruggles um, with Dubois and King, yeah. which I prob probably should have. Yeah, because we have plans. I think if we connect them, they can just merge their computers probably and mm -hmm. get that data all in each other's computer. Yeah, I agree. That way we wouldn't be working against each other. Yeah, and they could work together on. on right. This, yeah. Ruggles is still working for the town? No, but there might be some small charge if they become involved in um, right because again we he's done our road profile for that area for when we finally get it ready to pave at some point and i think yeah, i agree with michael we don't want to have one project working against the other so the way to do that is make yeah. sure the two engineers are at least talking to each other right we um you know it would be good to have the same civil engineer if hopefully he's still working for ruggles who did that design you know because he know he knows he created it so he yeah. he knows it best um so we'll see. Yeah. Even if he isn't able to come, I think I will. I probably connect. Just them at least connect them. them. They could share the data. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So that, yeah. So I'm glad I didn't forget to mention that. Um, anything else at all? I don't have, I can't think of I'm anything. I'm good. Else. Yes. Yes, Robin. Oh, Robin. I got a call from Tim Higgins the other day telling yeah. me that he's got some free time now. If we still want him to look at the town hall. Are we still yes. thinking about insulating the town hall? Uh, I would say yes. Tim mm -hmm. who? Tim so Higgins? still have him check out the electrical in there then. Yeah. Um, I uh, think let's look had, at it. Yeah. We had planned. Yeah, he said he could look at it and give us recommendations of what needed to be done. Okay. That'd be great. We still have okay. plans of, um, you know, I can't remember the woman's name, Diana, who, who yeah. um, we were going to start in the spring, maybe having a little ad hoc committee to start. Yeah. Um, Mary Jo Llewellyn. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well, that would answer one of the questions. Yeah. No so that would be good information to yeah, have. We, if we decide to insulate eventually, if the electrician's already inspected, we know what's involved in doing it. If we have to do any wiring before we can do it. Mm -hmm. You can see okay. Jefferson, New Hampshire's town hall just burnt to the ground. I don't think we want to be next. Uh, no, no. Okay, good. Yeah, that was timely. Yeah, because spring's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That way, at least that one question's answered when they're working on it. They can say, right. if we decide to insulate before winter next year, we know we got to wire. We don't have to wire. Yeah. Right. Okay. I will call him. Okay. I know when I had the attic or just the crawl space up above, we blew in some insulation when we were tightening up the house. They found some old wiring. So it kind of stopped the project, right? Yeah. I had to get an yeah. electrician to come and I probably look at four or five places a year where it's an old older house and they have a fire in the attic and I say did you have insulation done oh yes they just put it in a month ago did you have the wiring taken care of first 
no, I didn't. And you find, you end up finding a bad connection buried in the yeah. insulation. Yeah. Because yeah. the, yeah. the weatherization companies are supposed to tell you to have all that wiring replaced mm -hmm. that old top and tube before you bury it. Cause it's supposed to be air cooled. And once you bury it in two feet of cellulose, yeah. all the hot connections get really hot. And then the cellulose lights up and we're off to the races. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, I think that's pretty much it on our agenda, except for All the right. final item. <laughs> Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done.